I'm here to tell you about the fantastic Name the Game series from Australian Football Video. Now there's over 200 games available, including final series, state games, night premierships and the best home and away matches of the 91 and 92 seasons. Not just the highlights, not just the last quarter, but a hundred minutes of top footy action. So pick up your free catalogue at any Brasher store. And remember, footy brings out the best in a person. From Australian football video comes the most exciting footy decade ever, the electrifying 80s. See the marks and the sparks, the tragic and the magic, the misses and the kisses, the preacher and the creature, the flyers and the messiahs, the sneaks and the cheeks, the cunning stunts and the stunning punts. See the thrills, the spills, the skills and the deals. The electrifying 80s, the perfect gift for that special footy sickness. Welcome to the Foster's Cup Grand Final. It's Richmond versus Essendon clashing in a final for the first time in 50 years. The Bombers and Kevin Sheedy are trying to make it four nighttime championships. Thousands of fans have crammed into Waverley Park and they've witnessed already some wonderful entertainment. Everything from a hovercraft display to one of the best fireworks displays you can ever hope to see. One question, however, remains unanswered. Who will be the nighttime champions, the Foster's Cup champions in 1993? Will the Richmond revival continue? Out come the boys, led by Jeff Hogg onto Waverley Park. Or will the Baby Bombers triumph? It's all coming your way on AFL Today. Yes, it certainly is all coming your way here at Waverley Park. Good evening, everyone, wherever you may be watching, and welcome to the grand final of the 1993 Foster's Cup and it's only March, but we have a fabulous finals atmosphere and a great night for football with two sides who fully deserve to be in the finals action. Two improving sides. Remember, of course, the Tigers disappointing last year. They finished 13th and Essendon struggled too to finish in 8th position on the ladder. The crowd, fantastic. Probably 50,000 inside and outside. Well, there are still thousands of fans trying desperately to get in before the first bounce of the ball in five or six minutes time. Let's have a look at how both of these sides however made it through to the final. Richmond have been most impressive. They demolished Sydney by 80 points and then they accounted for Hawthorne, last year's champions, by 40 points and in their final game they beat the Lions in a close one, a thriller by just six points. Essendon too have looked the goods. The Baby Bombers have whipped Brisbane by 28. They defeated Adelaide by 19 and then they account for the West Coast Eagles in a most impressive display by 20 points. Coaches and captains for 93, a new look at Richmond. John Northey has been joined by Jeff Hogg, while at Essendon, Kevin Cheedy at the helm once again, and Bomber Thompson is his skipper. Let's have a brief look at the squads. As I said, two young sides that fully deserve to be here. For the Tigers, well, it's good to see Dale Waitman, the veteran Dale Waitman, back after a bout of pneumonia and also an Achilles problem. The ones to watch for the Tigers, Stuart Maxfield and their other runners, Lambert, Knights, Campbell, all very good on ballers, while up forward, of course, you've got the ever-dangerous Jeff Hogg. Essendon, too, have looked extremely good, particularly Gavin Wanganeen. His first game back last week against the Eagles, just about a best-on-ground performance. Mark Harvey has been solid across half-back. Alessio is going to have a big job in the ruck with Paul Semen out, but it promises to be a great contest between two very, very competitive sides. For, for these young Tigers, well this is all new territory for them, probably only Dale Waitman has any feeling at all of what it's like to play in a final. I would doubt whether any of these boys, as far as Richmond are concerned, have played in front of a crowd this size and same too with many of the Baby Bombers. The formalities are about to continue here at Waverley. Look at that crowd now, that gives you a bird's eye view of just how many people are crammed in here. Here are the formalities now, let's go down to the ground and Mike Williamson. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, would you please welcome our guest artist for tonight, Lisa Edwards. Lisa is probably better known to you at this stage as a backing singer for John Farnham, but believe me, she is becoming a star in her own right, nationally and internationally. In fact, later next month she will have her debut album launched here in Australia and it's called 
through the hoop. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, would you please stand for the national anthem to be performed by Lisa Edwards. Welcome back to Waverley, our commentators for this first quarter, Ian Robertson, Bernie Quinlan and Drew Morford. Thank you, Sandy, and just underway by less than a minute in the first quarter of the grand final. Essendon going left to right, and here's Gary O'Donnell with a free kick outside of half forward. Up towards full forward, Mark Ridley. First scoring chance for the Bombers. Todd Ridley, the ex-West Australian, who's played forward and back during the series in 93. As he started off at centre-half back last week against the West Coast Eagles, playing on uh, Glenn Jakovic, who has moved up uh, to the forward line later in the game. He can play both ends equally as well. A very promising player. First score of the night. What will it be? Just about over the goalpost. It's full points. So the Bombers off to a great start. They did very well last week across midfield. Again, they've won the ball out of the middle, where Schaefer will have a lot of trouble tonight doing the ruck work against Alessio or Somerville, the two big players. Somerville doing the ruck work to start off for the Bombers. And there's a player who kicked that goal, Todd Ridley, a terrific player. He really throws himself for those marks. This time he took the mark, a strong mark in front. There's a Richmond ruckman, Schaefer, and he's up against a very... Tough duo in uh, Somerville and Alessio. On the bench for Richmond, we have Waitman, Herneman, Bauer and Menegola. And for Essendon, you can see them there. Kickett, Philandia, Masiti and Kranzberg. We've lost a footy with the first kick of the night. Well, there's a very, very big crowd here at uh, Waverley to watch this game in uh, near perfect conditions. Just a little bit of breeze blowing to the far side of the ground as the umpire restarts play. The umpires are Hayden Kennedy and Darren Goldspink. 
chance for Somerville. Could have nearly been penalised for that. The attempted at kick there was by Schaefer, but a free kick has been picked out. It was looking like Knights, but now it's Ian Herman. Herman's kick to right half forward. Oh, that could have nearly been a free kick against Wallace. Play goes on. Harvey, the shepherd. Wanganeen, too heavy was Turner. And in comes Wallace. Wanganeen looks a little hurt. And Turner's being booked by umpire Goldspink for... Well, for a low, or forearm too high. A very heavy tackle when Wanganeen was down over the ball trying to pick it up. There he is. He's reporting him for striking. We can hear the umpire saying that. It was a very crude tackle. Wanganeen probably best on the ground against the West Coast Eagles. Played a magnificent game in his first match in the Foster's Cup Series. A terrific young player, Gavin Wanganeen. Wanganeen's kick goes near the wing. Somerville can't take the mark. Richmond with numbers. Herman bumped over the boundary line by Grenville. And the boundary umpire will throw it in. This is Ian Herman. Mark Thompson in the foreground. And Kevin Sheedy in the coach's box. It's a big night for Sheedy and John Northey. Kevin Sheedy played 251 games with Richmond. Tonight he's trying to beat them. Here's Herman with a kick up towards full forward. Hog underneath it. Gordon Nace runs onto it. Keeps it going forward for Jackson. On the ground. Regains his footing. Snap. This is close. And right on the line. A chance for a mark for the Tigers. Francis. It's an exciting young prospect too. It's Matthew Francis. He's just a little injury prone. Gary! Stage of his career. Gary! Terrific mark under pressure there, Robbo, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, great effort. Yes, a really good young player, this fellow. What a view we have of this shot for goal. Well, he hooks it badly for a behind. So some pretty heavy work here early in this match. A good bump there from Dean Wallace. Thanks, Bobby. A very fair hip and shoulder. Well, both coaches, Bernie, uh, I think Kevin Sheedy knows the value of uh, playing very good tight football and John Northey over his, what, five or six years with Melbourne showed us that uh, he gets his charges well committed. Yes, he sure did. He had a very good record at Melbourne. Manton's kick in. Francis just misjudges it. Goes past Spawn. There's a chance for Bremen. His kick into the centre is very good. Howard takes the mark. He's perhaps too far out to score, Johnny Howard. Onto that favoured left foot. Kicks it high. Close to the square, punched by Jackson. Gather was by Hills. Manton kicks smothered off the boot. Chris Danaher in the picture there. Ball goes over for a boundary throw in. Around about 40 metres from the Richmond goal. It's Neil Neil Danaher, of course, who has just been appointed the reserves coach at Essendon. Turner doing the ruck work. High over the pack. Thompson caught. Well run down by Campbell. Ball spills free. Spawn caught by Maxfield. Ball trundled back near the centre of the ground. Herman desperate. In goes Mercury. Herman will receive the free kick. A push in the back, says the umpire. On the line! The line! The line! A sharp edge to both these teams at the start of the game. Good penetration in the kick by Herman. Jackson in front. Wallace with a punch, playing his first game of the Foster's Cup. The ball goes out of bounds and we'll have a throw in in the forward pocket. Yes, Dean Wallace picking up uh, Stephen Jackson. I think Glenn Manton has a job on Jeff Hogg and his problems last week against the West Coast Eagles early with Peter Sumich. Another chance for the Tigers. Turner is 41. Through went Denham. Lambert did pretty well. He's been a star in this series. Shot for goal here by Campbell. Is good. What a goal. Tigers by a point. Yes, yeah, great start to this match. I think this will be a very good contest as we have a look at this in replay. The tap down, not conclusive there, but Lambert always in the middle of the pack. Hand pass out from Jackson. That's a wonderful snap there from Campbell. Terrific on his right foot. So the uh, difference. Just one behind in favour of the Tigers. But I think more importantly, they've settled down pretty well for a group of uh, what we classify as inexperienced. As far as finals are concerned, Harvey takes the free kick. Kicks it nicely to right half forward. Good lead, good mark. Excellent mark taken by Hurd. Oh, that could be 50. Severe that Brian be 50. Lees. And he's going to get 50, as Bernie Quinlan has suggested. Well, I can't see the reason for that. I know 
It's uh, good to be physical early in a match, Robbo. But from that area of the ground, about 70 metres out, he will uh, give Hurd very miserable 50 metres. Very miserable. I was just having a look at that, Robbo. There's a mark, a clear mark. Lee's behind, drags him to the ground and then jumps on top of him. Unnecessary play from Brian Lees, right in front of the umpire. Well, Hurd, hit straight over the footy, but he kicks poorly. James Hurd, who's shown us plenty. And we see a little bit of a, uh, how do you do as the players get ready to receive the kick in, but uh, James Hurd has been an excellent player since making his uh, debut for the Bombers last year. Big climb in the middle of the pack by Howard. Couldn't take the mark. O'Donnell for Essendon. Kicks up towards the forward pocket. Tigers be happy to see this one out. Or oh, actually they keep it in through Pratura. Off the ground, McCurry. No distance. And run over the line eventually by Paul Bullis. Recruit from Woodville West Torrens in Adelaide. Taken in the November draft. Huge crowd here for this grand final of the Foster's Cup. Well, I'd say Drew would probably be the biggest crowd we've seen at a Foster's Cup grand final ever. Oh! I think so. Knights, the defensive halfback, up towards centre wing. Three against three, man in front. Terrific mark by Francis. Not paid, and now a free kick for a push in the back. Let him up, let him up, short, play on! He comes backwards to Campbell. One of the leading possession winners in the competition last year. Oh, oh Jackson, should have gobbled that one. Well, he'd be very disappointed in that effort, Stephen Jackson, and there he uh, tells us all about it. But that was a bad miss. He was five metres in front of Dean Wallace. And he had a chance uh, just a few minutes ago too, and he was a bit disappointed that he didn't grab hold of it. Thompson, the kick is astray. The mark is taken strongly by Lees. Nearly run down, but gets his kick wide to the right wing position. Now Maxfield, excellent player, Maxfield. Strong kick to centre-half forward, no mark taken. In there was Wallace. Oh, grabbed by the leg was Hills, but play goes on. Francis, then Thompson for Essendon. Clear for Harvey. Line. Harvey's kick looks for Long. Grabbed when he didn't have the football. Perhaps a little ticky touch would. But the kick was certainly there. Long will take it. Long's kick. Out wide. Spawn. Sweeping onto the football. Spawn's kick inside 50 metres. And that's a great effort by Hurd. He's a very good overhead, isn't he? He's very, very, very slippery. slippery. Along with Ridley, the two Western right players there. who can take great overhead marks. And a young player is James Hurd, and already quite impressive in the Essendon team. His second hey. chance, he missed with the previous one. But this looks pretty good, is it? Uh, just offline. So Hurd with two behinds to his name. There's Lees, his opponent for the evening. Well, at this stage, anyway. 13 and a half ah. minutes left. And Essendon lead by a point. Kick in by Petura. Well outside the 50. Somerville using body work. But the path was cleared for Schaefer. Off the ground goes Lees. A forward of centre wing. Harvey meets it. And goes for the boundary line, Mark Harvey. Essendon's best and fairest last year. Not too many veterans in this game. Harvey one of them. And there's another, Dale Waitman. The real veteran for the Tigers starting the game on the bench. Four on the interchange bench in the Foster's Cup. Kevin Sheedy, for one, would like to see that go into the uh, day competition. Here's Wanganang. Nash with him. The ball out of bounds at half forward for Richmond. Go Tigers! Tigers fans have come out of the woodwork. They haven't been in a grand final since 82. Jackson. Straight back to the boundary line and another throw in. Jackson, one of the imports, came from the West on, Coast Tigers. Eagles. A real group of youngsters in the Tigers lineup. Plenty in Essendon as well. Tap forward by Knights. Lambert, great gather. Just about the player of the series so far. Bremen, centering kick. Well, it's marked by Thompson, the Essendon captain. Away to Harvey. Harvey, who usually uh, gives the player up the field every chance, and he doesn't make any mistake here. Puts it out in front of Mercury. Chasing him is Howard. Oh, well done by Johnny Howard. Well done by Mercury too. He was beaten for it. Down goes Hurd. Ball goes over. Boundary throw in. Oh, some good work there, Drew. By both players. 
out in the first place, being out position. And then eventually by her big thumb. Goes in the direction of Lee Spawn. Perhaps being a bit too vigorous, but the, the umpire gives a signal for a boundary throw in. Kevin Sheedy. Too worried at this stage. Holding Both it. sides still Fire. finding each other out. Now the free kick was Richmond's from the ruck contest. Advantages with Knights. Knights is kick. Oh, I tell you what, he had a chance. He nearly had it. I thought he'd had nearly had it anyway. But Essendon team up beautifully across that full back line. Harvey takes it from Wanganeen. Harvey. A oh, brilliant running by Wanganeen. Up through right half back into the centre. Good kick too. Some of the marks. Somerville sweeps a hand pass about 25 metres up the ground. Grenville, caught by Brendan, but beats him. Goes in with the hand pass. Trouble for you, O'Donnell. Drops it in Maxfield's tackle. Socket forward by uh, Lees. Centre circle, Thompson. Out wide he goes to Danaher. Back to Denham. Pressure all over the ground. Denham's kick not bad under pressure. It hits the floor. Ooh, down goes Mercury. Herman. Third has been terrific. Knocked forward by Ridley to Long. Long only 25 metres out. Puts it wide for Buick. He hooks back and kicks a great goal. <laughs> Bombers have doubled the Tigers' score. Yes, well, terrific play there by Michael Long, the player on screen. He creates so many opportunities for the Bombers. Always looking for a teammate in better position. James Hurd gets a hand pass out. A pretty scrappy passage of play there. Michael Long maybe could have went for goal himself. And fed it out to the running player in Buick. Well, Essendon lead by seven points. Their goal kickers, Ridley and Buick. Richmond's Wayne Campbell. Lambert gets it clear, but it's really to Essendon's advantage. Lovely pick up by Mercury. Little kick, not bad. Looking for Ridley, but a free kick back. A shepherding infringement, Robbo. So, that's a free kick to Richmond. To be taken by Campbell. Very important player for Richmond is Wayne Campbell. High kick in near the centre. Turner can't take the mark. Harvey tries to tap it for Wanganeen. Wanganeen, if he's this popular with the umpires at this stage, I'd like to have a couple of bob each way the Brownlow medal draw be a bad bet. All Australian last year. Essendon's only representative in that team. Spawn up to full forward. Almost to Ridley. Alessio, the agility of a rover, to Ridley who kicks the goal. Ridley's got two. And Steve Alessio, who spent uh, most of his younger years playing basketball, uh, did it like a uh, Terrific, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. it's very agile and mobile for a big man, Alessio. 199 centimetres, moving like a rover there. He's got so many options on the forward line, Essendon. He's got more than Ridley. Oh, terrific. Yeah, they've got great skills, these young bombers. So back with the uh, big men near the centre. Schaefer gets the tap out, taken away by O'Donnell. Quickly gets uh, the football onto his boot. Goes into a vacant area at right half back. Taken over by Lees. Gee, you could really be penalised. No. Be a tough call, Robbo, that Brian Lees really had very few options, didn't he? A couple of bombers sweating on him, and uh, that's about all he could do. <laughs> well, I have my heart in my mouth. I don't know about the players, but uh, sometimes they do get penalised for that sort of thing. Oh, attempted kick off the ground by Long. Young runs into Herman. Long, well tackled. Knights. Very polished player. One grab man is Matthew Knights. Kick to the half forward area. Jackson falling over. Is he's it? got to improve a little bit, doesn't he? That man again, though, Wanganeen. Yeah. Right on his hammer. Affecting that spoil. Peter Philandia on the bench there for the Bombers. As a boundary throw in takes place just in Richmond's forward half. There's Wanganeen, Robbo's favourite. Knights. Knights grab. We'll take the free kick. Beat Wayne Campbell by one vote last year in Richmond's best and fairest. Which is how he's bulked up a bit, doesn't he? 
Kick by Knights. Not great penetration. Hog at the back. Jackson, can he keep this in? Runs out of room. About 15 metres around from the behind post. Stephen Jackson kicks seven goals in the Tigers' opening game against the Swans, including five and one quarter. This is Turner against Wallace. Nash buried. Attacked by Hills. The ball out of play. Well, there's not much of him, Chris Nash, but uh, he really is a goal sneak. He's uh, kick it. Kransberg on the bench. Little kick out. Thompson. Thompson for Essendon. Good kick. Gee, there's some space here. Bounces nicely for Spawn. And gets around onto his favourite side. He's got plenty of time to lope away and kick it into the left forward pocket. And in the finish, really wasn't quite as good as what Kieran Spawn would have thought. No, he blazed away. They really should have made uh, the better of that scoring opportunity. He's got a slightly awkward kicking action. It didn't come off the boot at all ball. well, did it? I think really in the end he was just trying to kick the goal rather than worry about the forwards. And it uh, just tumbled off the boot. Alessio and dead. Bullis. That's Barry Young, number 20 for Richmond. Uh -oh. Michael Long. Ball goes to the back. Maxfield. Just harassed a little bit there. Through comes Knights. Kick off the ground. Back towards Hills. Hand pass for Harvey. He's in turn be chopped off by Bremen. Just slipping a little bit there, Todd Bremen. And the Essendon player, Grenvold, infringing. So Bremen will take the free kick. Just near centre half back. A nice kick, but a little short. Great courage, Harvey. Yes, he's a wonderful player at half back. Played there all of 92, of course. Played every game. Best and fairest for the Bombers. The Grenville should have taken that mark. Lucky now to get the free kick. Next pass. Up to centre half forward. Oh, roving by Long. He puts the hand pass up for, for uh, Hurd. Off the ground goes Hurd and kicks a goal. Well, he had two misses from set shots, but he kicked a soccer. And the Bombers are 4-2 to 1-1. As Grenvold has a rest, and he's been replaced by Joe Masuti, number 52 for the Bombers. Let's have a look at the replay of this. Michael Long again involved in this passage of play. Seems to be playing across half forward, Michael Long. Very constructive player. Out in front of Hurd, he couldn't take control of it. But just got the boot of the ball and tumbled it through for a good goal for the Bombers. 4-2 to 1-1. Seven and three-quarter minutes left in the first quarter. Tigers have got some thinking. And in front of them, Knights takes the ball away. High kick. Taken by Harvey. Already. An effective player for Essendon across the half-back line. They're looking very good at the moment, the Bombers, aren't they? Early in the season, they played a great game against Adelaide. Excellent against the West Coast Eagles. We've got a good blending, blending of experience and youth in this side. Campbell. Oh, just off in a little bit of trouble. No, he's able to collect the footy. And kicks it in towards centre-half forward. No mark taken. Off the ground, Thompson rebounds. Here's a chance for Jackson. Ever casual, but he does it well. On to Turner. Naish, the goal sneak. Naish gets the goal. Well done by Chris Naish, and boy, Richmond needed that. 4-2 Essendon, 2-1 the Tigers. Yes, a badly needed goal by the Tigers. Plenty of spirit in this Tigers side. In a pretty ordinary 1992. Ending up 13th on the ladder. And uh, only five wins under their belt, the Tigers, in 1992. They've certainly come out with some spirit at the start of this season, 1993, the Foster's Cup. A couple of great wins, a great win over Hawthorne. And Chris Nace was very good in the uh, crunch against Fitzroy. 26 plays 13, just under seven minutes to go to quarter time. Still a big crowd outside trying to get in, we hear. Bremen on the turn, a high ball to centre half forward. Wanganeen, fantastic. Kick by Wanganeen is perfect, out the hills. He's had a superb series on the wing for the Bombers. Kick by Hills. Up short of half forward. Buick slides in after it. Knocked forward by Herman. Lambert, but it was just tipped away from him. McCurry, number 45. Good running by Thompson. Kick by Thompson up to the 50. Somerville, under pressure. Comes down to free. Hurried kick. 
Knight's drop what he should have taken there. And gives away a free kick. Masiti up to centre half forward. Huge oh. pack. It spills to the back. Free missed it. Buick's hand pass to Long. Long kicks the goal. Oh, it's touched. Look to certainty. But getting back there to touch it was uh, to pull us. And Long actually only gave it about 25% power. I think he'd written it down in the book for himself. Yes, maybe just a little bit too casual there, uh, Michael Long. Wouldn't want to watch the replay, I don't think. No, Bernie he wouldn't he? be happy with that. I don't think Kevin Sheedy would be. It just the video show... replays at Sheeds at midnight one night and show that up. Yeah, it just goes to show you cannot uh, relax at any stage in this game. Bullis with his eyes right on the football. Just failed to take the chess mark. Lambert working very hard at ground level. Handball astray. Under pressure though, O'Donnell, his kick in towards centre half forward. Nearly gathered by Somerville, taken away there by Campbell. Well done. Oh, that was the old flick pass, wasn't it? Maxfield, kick off the ground. Striving hard was Francis. Knights, very, very skillful. Away for Maxfield. Natural left footer, Maxfield. Kick. Oh, terrific performance by Wangamin. Man oh man for a teenager. I'm with you, Robbo. If he doesn't win the Brownlow this year, it'll be one year in the pretty uh, near future, I would say. He's a magnificent player, Wanganin. Punch goes back for Wallace. Oh, down he goes. Good tackle, Jackson. Cleaned up by Naish. Kick it towards full forward. Mark taken by Manton. Bombers out of a tight spot temporarily. Manton's kick up short of centre wing. Somerville. Can't mark. Still after it. Herman. Ex-Carlton player on the turn inside the 50. Chance for the Tigers. Hogg interfered with and will take the free kick against Manton. Well, he positioned himself beautifully, Jeff Hogg, in front of Manton, who's not a tall player. And I think he was holding the Guernsey there, as we will probably see this in replay, just holding just briefly, but he was holding Jeff Hogg. But the whoa, positioning was whoa. a very important aspect of that Let's contest. Gary. Tigers' new skipper this year. Beautiful kick. Well, it's living up to expectations this game. Yes, well, they fought back very well, the Tigers. And Jeff Hogg, it's good to see him playing at full forward. In his best position, no doubt. Let's have a look at this free kick again. Hogg, who's kicked almost 250 goals in his VFL, AFL career. Just getting in front of Manton there. You could see him holding the Guernsey there with the left hand. And no doubt about that free kick. Okay. Well, Hogg kicked the goal, but Ian Herman did some good work in there to get the football to the Richmond skipper. And the Tigers Way trail on. by just eight points. Away Way goes Schaefer. Gets his left foot to it. Deceives Wanganoon. The bounce was awkward. Nash, can he get his second? No, he hooks the kick. And the Tiger supporters in this vast crowd. I think they'd be calling out, why didn't he get it over the top to uh, the skipper there, Jeff Hock. Maybe panicked just slightly there, Chris Nash. That was the play that could have been on. Just drew, uh, could have drawn Glenn Madden out and just an easy Ooh, one over the risky top. Risky conveyance here, but well done oh, by Mercedes in the finish. Sorry, Bernie, oh. but uh, th that kick was very short by Wanganin. Oh. He's able to make up for it and kicks it further afield where da Chris Danaher has marked at oh. left half back. Play on is the umpire. Danaher's kick towards centre wing. O'Donnell can't take it. Heard skillfully. Nice hand pass too. Mercury just growing in stature with every game he plays. And Spawn is marked. Essendon have done well to work the ball up to the half forward area. Spawn's kick goes across that line where the mark is taken by Ridley. And I like him better in the forward line than in defence. Well, that was good work also there from Buick, keeping his opponent out of the contest, giving uh, Todd Ridley the free run at the ball. Here we see Ridley, a very skilled player. Uh, that was good work. We just saw that uh, from Buick Take him on out. the edge of the pitcher there, keeping his man out of that contest. Well, Ridley has kicked two. He's kicking from about 40 metres out. Gets the distance, a very long kick, but uh, it's off to the right. So behind results in that Todd Ridley shot for goal. And Essendon proceed. 4-4, four, four. Richmond 3-2. Essendon by eight points.
Well, I'm not kidding. If there are people still trying to get in, by the time they all get in, there'll be 70,000 here. Punch from behind. Gives Spawn a chance. Beaten Maxfield so far. Maxfield comes back at this stage. Bullis. Untidy, but effective. And got a hand to what looked like a certain goal to Michael Long earlier on. I don't know whether they've given up or whether they're still trying to get in, but this is a huge crowd. Alessio on the turn. Did well there, Schaefer. Long in the forward pocket. Somerville climbing early. Man in front takes it. How? No, free kick. Patura. Who was moved out off Ridley. Went on to Hurd and Hurd immediately kicked a goal. Straight up the centre of the ground. Thompson marks. The front edge of the centre square. We have under two minutes to go to quarter time. Kicked by Thompson. Somerville can't mark again. Hands to the ball. There's Bullis. Danaher up on the forward line. Alessio in playing a role. Mercury off the ground. Sweeps it to Hurd. Shepherding by Denham. Play on! Play on. Kicked by Hurd. Up to the goal square. Long tries to shepherd it through. In the back group. Gives away the free. Yeah, it's a little blatant that one. Free kick against Michael Long. Right in the middle of Barry Young's back, as we can see this in replay. Very early. Pushed him out. Thanks, Mick. So it's Barry Young to take the free kick right in the goal square. Richmond are doing well in this first term. Good kick by Young. Covers about 45 metres. Hills is there for Essendon. Tackled by Turner. On the bottom of the pack there is Petura. And the Essendon player, according to the umpire, hasn't got it, and it's Paul Hills. Just 20 years of age. Kicking towards centre half forward, taken by Buick, beautifully collected. Spawn. One grab is important. O'Donnell's kick smothered. Richmond defence under a bit of pressure. Howard able to get his foot to it. Bounces just inside the boundary line. So we'll have a throw in about 65 metres around for the Essendon goal. Couple Bombers lead 4 4 to 3 2. Sorry, and a couple of very important smothers in this first quarter by the Tigers. That one by Ian Herman, who's uh, got the tagging job on Gary O'Donnell. Here's Knights trying to weave his way through. Fantastic. Lambert up towards centre wing. Nash Wanganeen doing the job again. Well, Wanganeen's had seven kicks already in his back pocket. From the back pocket and three marks. And you really start attacking in football these days from the last line, if not the second last line, even the last line of defence. Here's another chance for the Tigers with just seconds remaining. On the run here, Francis. Poor kick. Shocking kick, wasn't it? He's apologising to Jeff Hogg, but uh, really, there's no pressure coming from any Essendon player. He's five metres clear. He should have done better with that kick. Manton's kick is uh, high, up near the wing. Herman and O'Donnell. Boundary throw in will take place. So, quarter time. Very near now as the players mingle for this boundary throw in. Just forward of centre wing for the Tigers. Big punch from Thompson over the top of the pack there. And it goes back over for another throw in. Interesting spectators, it's a perfect evening for football. A little breezy, but uh, conditions magnificent. Francis, Bremen. Now chance for Mercedes. Well done, but Lees chops it off. Lees kick. Siren sounds. Quarter time in the grand final of the Fosters Cup for 1993. Essendon lead 28 to Richmond 20. And there he is again, Nick Walsh. Remember Nick Walsh? The youngster kicked eight goals for Essendon in the Fosters Cup semi-final of 1987. He would play only 11 AFL games and kick one goal. But in this match, he helped the Bombers record a 108-point win over the West Coast Eagles. What a time, though. Still a long way to go. The Bombers lead 4-4-28. Richmond are 3-2-20 as we go down to the boundary line and welcome to our telecast, Jared Healy, as some people decide to head home, Jared. Yes, well, that's true, Sandy. They can't get into the ground, but uh, just a quick update on the wind. No advantage. The wind blowing straight across the ground towards the members. So pretty even at the present time. I thought an interesting sheet he's used of Somerville in that quarter. Started him in the ruck, and McCurry was at centre-half forward. After the bounce, McCurry went on as an extra runner. Somerville went to centre-half forward. It appears that Alessio has that job this quarter, though. For the second quarter, Peter McKenna, Don Scott, and Peter Landy. Thank you, Sandy. Herman goes down at the bottom of the pack, and we'll see another bounce. 
the debris, of course. You can see on the ground little bits of the fireworks display. Richmond opening a little nervously. They started to get their act together late in the first quarter. Knights, dual best and fairest winner at Punt Road. Slaps the ball ahead of him. Chris Danaher farms out a hand pass. I don't think O'Donnell would have been too happy with that. Kick it off the ground. Masiti gives him a bit of a hand. Ooh. Now O'Donnell, an errant hand pass. Snaffled well. Michael Long, who was brilliant close to goal in the opening quarter, just runs out of room here. Lambert gleefully accepting his hand pass. Alessio won't catch him. He lumbers after him. Lambert gets his kick. Campbell the high flyer. Kick Richmond's first goal. Knights on the boundary line. Grab. Appear to be not in possession. No free kick. Still comes out with the football. Excellently done. Kicks to the 50. Jackson, who missed a couple of marks in the first quarter, leaves it for Hogg, who turns on the Swipney bit. Kicks back magnificently. Won't score. And Wanganeen, man of the first quarter, mark or free kick. Yes, Kevin Wanganeen. Almost best man on the ground at the moment. Finds Chris Danaher at half back. Okay! There in! Chris Danaher, centre wing. The pack develops and the ball falls to the ground and over the line. Halfway between centre wing and half forward. There's Craig Lambert. Now okay, Kevin guys. Sheedy and Neil Danaher. And uh, I was talking to Kevin Sheedy today and I know he was very concerned about the game. They certainly haven't underestimated Richmond. Richmond's form has been terrific hey, now. Stanaher on the left foot. Straight to Maxfield though. Maxfield, a long kick towards half forward. Wangadine, oh, almost one-handed. Chris Stanaher, quick little hand pass. Back it comes to Wanganeen. Wanganeen on the left foot. Now that'll be down the ground for a late tackle. The advantage paid as Basidi gets it across to Gary O'Donnell. O'Donnell to the half forward line. Danger here for the Tigers as James Hurst races after it. Ridley was there. Now the speedy Buick. Buick goes inside the Hurd. Hurd races it into what? Goal for his second. And James Hurd has goal. Great play by the Bombers. 5-4 to 3-2. Well, it was her that came out and really did attack and set it up. That's the way you want a forward to run at the ball. We missed there, it is there. Came out, set it up. Buick running past, then the 1-2 over the top. And Hurd, who had played on the back line in this night series, now relishing forward. He's a very clever player up forward who knows where the goals are. Kicked six goals against Hawthorne in the practice game. He's kicked two goals, two tonight. And, of course, the best man on the ground will be awarded the Michael Tuck medal. I guess Wanganeed and James Hurd are pretty close to uh, equal best on the ground at the moment. Be in line for that honour. Francis couldn't get rid of it. Picked up by Denham. A quick kick down to the 50-metre mark. A big pack of players off. Buick again. He's dangerous. Close to goals. And that's close enough for him. He goes goalward but misses on this occasion and puts it through for only one behind. So one goal, one. Kicked by Darren Buick. Kicked a gem of a goal earlier. John Northey maybe looking a little worried. Howard to bring the ball back into play. It's still the early, early days yet. It's that early night yet. Huge crowd in. Maybe close to a record for a Foster's Cup Grand Final. Heard and Knights, along with Petura, and they all see the ball over the boundary line. Not quite sure of the record, but I think if we go back to 1980, the Collingwood North Melbourne clash would have been pretty close to the record crowd here. Francis Burke, those unmistakable spectacles, knocked down by Schaefer. Masiti couldn't take it. Knights in everything for Richmond, one of their best so far. Was a long play. Heard? No. Comes out of it with the football. Inside 50. Ball tapped back to that mark. Buick shepherded out of the contest. Lambert took a dive. Looked for the free kick. Long, always dangerous. Over to Spawn. Steadies. Kicks from a standing start, but he too is off target and out of bounds or one behind. It's the latter. Kicked by Kieran Spawn, his first score of the night. Further behind to Essendon, they lead by 16 points. Huge crowd here at Waverley as John Howard brings the ball back into play. Nice kick to Schaefer and he marks it half back. No. Robert Schaefer, been a surprise packet. Done well, Pete. Yeah, recruited from Sturt and he's been an excellent player in the night series. Now there's a lovely hand pass coming over to Gary O'Donnell and on the Every time Long gets it, he's very constructive. Try and defend. Bullis was there. He went. Heard around the corner on the right foot. And he has missed to the right. A behind. 
There he is, James Hurd, his grandfather, a former president and great player for Essendon, Alan Hurd, and his dad actually played a games in the reserves out there, also uh, by the name of Alan Hurd. Herdeman warming up too, Peter, for Richmond. A player with a bit of speed, he could give them something. They need something at the moment because they're not handling the ball with any confidence. Hurd's kicked two goals, three. Kick up to the square again, marking contest. Buett trying to sneak it off the top of the pack. Ah, like Kevin Bartlett, long again. Gets ridden into the ground. Buick this time on the left foot, didn't get his kick in. He could have been close to a free kick. The umpire says play on. And it's uh, kicked out of bounds. Petura has gone off the ground. Now remember, Petura played particularly well against uh, Hawthorne, I think it was, earlier in this competition. His father, of course, played for Richmond. And before that, South Melbourne. That protracted clearance wrangle. Quite some years ago it was now. Mark Harvey, one of the best, if not the best, against the West Coast Eagles last week, uh, last week with Turner, who wins it. Turner had his number taken, incidentally, in the first quarter. Much improved player too, Scott Turner's done well in the ruck. He's done a little bit of bite to his game. I know he's been reported, but he's in there using his body, attacking particularly well. His ruck work really has improved, but then again, he's against a smaller player in Harvey. Does well again. Taps it to the front of the pack. Herman, formerly from Carlton. Wallace at the back. Ball slapped away from him. Wallace wins out at the end. Short kick, covers about 35 metres. Kieran Spawn on the burst. Kicks inside 50. Richmond had the numbers in defence, plenty of them down there. Ball booted well clear up towards midfield. Will land just about in the circle. And Essendon doing it well. Harvey takes the hand pass, kicks over the head of Wanganeen and Nash. Big Alessio, who we saw pretty dangerous close to goal last week, had a hand in a couple of goals. Farms it out for Masiti. Kicks from 40 metres out directly in front and might have been just touched on the line by John Howard, I think, yes. Further behind to the Bombers, 5-8 to 3-2. Bremen's now gone on the back line for Richmond. Hold it tight. There is in screen, beautiful kick of the football. 13 shots to 5, which is looking quite ominous. It's, it's uh, blood pouring out of the nose of Todd Bremen. It's a beautiful kick he is. Look at that one, right out the half back. Oh, the Richmond players waited back and didn't really go for that one. And it's a touch. the ball forced over the line, yes, off hands. So it's at half back. There's Dale Waitman. I wonder when uh, the Tiger champ will come into the fray. Certainly give them a lift when he comes on with this experience. There's Kickett putting the ball on the ground. Denham and Lambert. And free kick to Denham, I would think, against Lambert. Or was it going to Chris Denner, her? I think it was, it was Kickett. No, it's Kickett. So very lucky to get that one. Kickett to half forward. Somerville couldn't take the mark. Over the back with Bullis. He tries to tuck it in. Oh, he's a class player, Knights. Look at that weaving. Beautiful to watch. And a magnificent kick finds Lees at half back. The Tigers off and running. This is Chris Nash. Nash with one bounce. There's a fight going on behind the players. The kick comes down towards half forward. Let's see what Jackson can do. Was that in the back? Umpire said no. Dean Wallace hooks it back. Good play by Wallace. Defensively to head for the line. And there was a bit of a dust-up going on down there between Somerville and Bullis. Still going on. Wearing Neil Barnes' old, num old number two. Let's see what happened, how it started. A little bit of a shepherd off the ball. And uh, cop that. I might be looking at that play from the week. <laughs> Not much in it, but uh, the intent was there. Herneman. Finally, the ball taken over the boundary line. What do you, you think of that, Don, part of the game? No, uh, that's not part of the game, Peter. I uh, just wanted your opinion, Don. Just interested watching Chris Nash. He broke from the centre there. He had an option, which was Herneman on the wing. Really didn't look for him. He had for Hogg earlier in the first quarter. And went over the top two. He's got to lift his horizon just a little bit more. Be aware of what's going on what around about. What was his tap down taken by Lambert? Out of bounds with the long hand pass. Another boundary throw in, same spot. Wallace this time gets the front position. <laughs> same play. Lambert, Herneman. That's going close to goal. Mightn't be close enough. And Harvey again. Good defence. He was brilliant last week against the West Coast Eagles. And one rushed behind. He's a smart player, number 11. A number worn by a former Richmond captain, captain Bruce Monte. Peter Kranzberg warming up for Essendon. So another change is about to take place. Might be some of all. Well, he's being walked there. He's on screen coming up to the centre. Maybe he'll be going into the ruck some of all when they bring Alessio off. Well, maybe they'll just take him off to uh, let him cool down. Don Lees 
gives the hand pass away because the, that fight could develop or could have developed into something. Maxfield. Maxfield kicking from a standing start up towards half forward. Francis. Can he pick it up, the big fellow? Oh, he slips over the turf. A little bit greasy after the rain we had overnight and this morning. That's not a bad sort of a shot, but just off target. And one behind or out of bounds? It's out of bounds, so some of them are finally going off the ground. Scored by Brian Wood, former Richmond player, of course. Dean Wong has to take the free kick. Chips it in short to Bomber Thompson. And Thompson marks just up from the left back pocket. Listen captain. He's good 100%. Now Alessio, big mark in front. Used his body well. Over to O'Donnell. Looking for Michael Long. One on one duel. Couldn't take the mark. Might have been a free kick. A little bit of interference. Too long or against him. What was that for? Don in the back? In the back. Harvey again. Doing well. This time wobbles the kick up towards full forward. A real chance for the Bombers now. Buick once more. Turns this time onto his right foot. Centering kick for Dana. Who marked in front of Campbell. Well, Michael Long was by himself in the goal square. There he is, now being picked up by Young, but he was in the goal square a long time by himself. She was a great kick though, wasn't it, by Buick? Pinpoint. And so, Chris Danaher, Anthony Danaher named in the 30, but not playing tonight. Chris's kick drifting off to the left-hand goal post and passed it, so through for one behind. First score of the evening, one point to Essendon. Well, the Tigers, Pete, being uh, let off the hook here, 5 9 to 3 3, and that's a pretty dominant score line. If you look at the number of shots had. Chris now. Nash going into the forward line. Pete, he's been picked up by Wanganin. Now, they started as opponents in the back line, so obviously, wherever Nash goes, Wanganin goes with him. Uh, Chris Danaher, a beautiful mark out from that kick in by Todd Freeman now. Again, under pressure of the Tigers, the ball put up in front of goal, thumped around by Barry Young, players in hard after it, there's Long, punched away by Bremen, Heard in after it, now Young, and the umpire will come in and bounce. Yeah, Sean Denham's got the job on Craig Lambert, now Lambert's gone on to the half-forward line and Denham's gone with him, so it's possibly why Wanganin has gone with Naish. Well, Essendon have looked far the better side in this term, Richmond were getting back into it this last half of the first quarter, but... Alessio, Buick the danger man, was he held? Ball oh, could have been holding the man on Darren Buick, very unlucky. And eventually the ball, and Buick cannot believe it. Never look at him. Well, Let's see, now was he grabbed? No, that, he knocked it on, then he was grabbed, that should have been holding the man. Yep. No doubt about that. Forward pocket, Alessio, now Buick. Brings it up in front of goal, Barry Young. Oh, he's doing pretty well on Michael Long. That was great play by Young. He certainly has got a lot of ability. Nash. Oh, he went the play on. He caught one right across the mouth. So Chris Nash at half back. Oh. And uh, the umpire calling play on now as the kick comes out towards Knights. He's playing a great game, Matthew Knights. Off he goes. Hooks it around the corner. At half forward is Campbell. Campbell back towards Knights. Still going on with that Knights. Tremendous play by Knights. On to Turner. They've got to do something with this foray forward as it comes right out the Maxfield. He's on his left foot. He swings around. He bombs in a goal. A great long kick for a ripper. Tremendous play that by Richmond. All starting through Knights. They needed it. 4 3 to 5 9. Richmond's first goal of the quarter. And a great build up. And this man on the wing really does impress. He works particularly hard. He's really hard at the ball. He goes in hard. He'll lay heavy shepherds. And he's got a lot of pace and a lot of skill. What a great kick from 52 metres out. Stuart Maxfield. Maxfield's first goal and Richmond's first goal at the second quarter. Ten and a half minutes before half time and 12 points the difference. The Tigers back in it. Oh! Alessio. Lambert. Goes Denham. To, goes to ground a lot, Craig Lambert. He's in there getting the ball done. Lees. Herneman. O O'Donnell. Taps it out wide. Thompson can't take it. Ball just scooped out from oh. underneath him. That was brilliantly done. Kick up towards half forward for Richmond in the mark. Taken by Nash. Gee, that ground slippery. Campbell again. Palms out the hand pass. Here's a Tiger chart. Campbell gets it back. Goes Goldwood one on one down in the square. At the back hook. And goes. Hog second. Well, it's unfortunate for young Wendman. He was in front. And Hog 
playing from behind was very, very fortunate. Here's the build-up. Campbell just getting foot to the ball. And there it is going down. Manton in front, making play, just edged under it by Hogg. And that was bad luck because the youngster was in the right position. Because he's just not strong in the upper body to compete on man on man at this stage. But that's the way he's got to play in front, attack the ball. Unfortunate, it was a mistake. The Tigers have hit back hard. Essendon were getting on top. Now the margin only six points. What a change to the game. Essendon have peppered the goals. And this man has been magnificent, Matthew Knights. Long driving kick. Wingardine, magnificent mark too. I used that term magnificent then twice, but both those players are just sensational to watch. Yes, Wingardine had a magnificent first quarter. Alessio. Kick drops a little bit short. One on one duel. Young gets the front position, doesn't take it. Long, brilliant ball skills from this fellow. And again, a one on one duel out in front of goal. It's an estimate of Mark III, who's got two goals, three against his name so far. As we watch it again, the bomber forward line, Don, pretty open. Yes, but look at that disposal. When you're a forward and you've got people who can deliver the ball like that, you can lead with confidence. He looks much better on the forward line, doesn't he? Played in defence. In the earlier Foster's Cup, that's a goal. He's got his third, 3-3. So I heard the leading goal kicker in the match was three goals, three. Hot two for Richmond, and Todd Ridley also has two goals, both kicked in the first quarter. Well, he's a problem up on half forward. It's a good battle between Young. There's Young. He had the job on long. Maybe there's been a shift because he was very close to spawn Young on that occasion. But Michael Long does possess great skill. And there it was. Two goals in the margin. James Hurt has kicked three. Eight and a half minutes before oh. half time. Schaefer won that one. Mark Harvey. To the wide open spaces, the ball rolling over and over and over the line. Just looking at Michael Long, he's picking up Wayne Herneman on half back. Now that's great to see because. He, you know, as a half-back, he set that goal up for her by running through. He had the job on Young on earlier in the in the day, all night. Here's Lambert. They really have to get a lot more at the moment out of Lambert. Leads to half-forward. Francis Hall should have gone for the oh, mark. Yeah. Jackson, the Play holding on. Advantage paid. Chris Nates, where's Hogg? The lead is on into the pocket. There he is. Jeff Hogg, great play. Richmond, tremendous good forward play by Hogg. Richmond are making a change in Over. the background. Over. Bauer is, is about there. to come on. Glenn. Glenn. And coming off is Herman. Now, Jeff Hogg will kick. I don't want to moz him, but he is normally a pretty accurate kick. He's kicked two. And he's on a very, very acute angle. Hogg, a high floating kick. That is a magnificent kick. A goal. Relishing the captaincy, Peter put it here. Well, he's kicked three. He certainly is relishing the captaincy. And again, the margin, six points. What a game we're seeing, Don. Yes, well, a responsibility. I remember his first goal he kicked this year. It was in this night game against Hawthorne. He really did have to bite the bullet. And he went back. It was a terrific captain's effort. And what he's doing... Every time he gets the ball, he's really making sure of it. He's got a little bit too much upper body strength for Manton because as that ball was coming down, he got in front, held Manton out, then led with confidence. Hogg and Hurd both had three goals, 39 plays 45, seven and a half minutes before the main break. Alessio, good hand pass, bounces beautifully for long away, goes again clear, and once more the bomber forward line open, kick it! Here a kick it under an injury cloud, but he moved pretty well to get that. Well, the message better go out to Herneman. He's got to pick him up. I suppose that's what it's on now. There's John Northy on the phone. But Herneman's got to pick Long up. Can they get the quick reply? Bending back. It's coming back. Is it far enough? Why didn't the goal umpire? One behind. So his first score of the night. Here he kick it. One behind. And Essendon's 10th. 6-10 to 6-3. Seven points hit it. Bremen goes to the outer side and finds Nash. Nash from left half back. Or a little bit short of that. Kicks to centre wing into the open spaces. Which way will it bounce? Richmond's or Essendon? Numbers even out there. Bauer, who's just come onto the ground. 
Kicks from the Foster side, up towards half forward. Wallace underneath it, gets a second chance. Underground hand pass, but a very clever one nonetheless. Back to Danaher. Turns on a threepenny bit. Richmond having the numbers. Alessio, outgun there. Wanganeen, O'Donnell. There are some balletic st uh, steps there. Ridley, up to half forward. Kranzberg, so Kevin Sheedy using the interchange bench. He started on the bench. On the line! Kranzberg. Also, right. So he's beefed up a little bit since he's been at Windy Hill. Maybe too far out to score, although the breeze certainly going to that end. Oh, that's a ripper kick! Tremendous goal! Who said he was too far out to score? You. <laughs> what a great kick. Well, there's not too many left footers who are bad kicks. Here he is, Pete. Here he is, the Western Australian, or former Western Australian. That's 60 metres out. When he came across, he was a great running player, had great endurance, played up, back, up, forward. Wearing Ken Fraser's number 23. Mike. Kevin Sheedy, the coach of the Bombers, would be happy with that kick. That did travel 60 metres in for a drop punt by Peter Kranzberg. That is a great effort. 7 10 to 6 3. Ah! Knights again to the half forward line. Harvey waits underneath the door. Tapped it back though in the favoured Lambert. Lambert hotly pressed by Denham. Denham's done a wonderful job on Lambert. And eventually he's in frustration. Lambert free has kick. given away the free kick to Denham. Denham at half back. A good effort by, and silly play by Turner who did not hand the ball back. He was warned by the umpire. Now he gets 50 metres. He's had a dirty night, hasn't he? Had his number taken in the first quarter for an incident on uh, Gavin Wanganeen and now 50 metres against him. Well, here's Sean Denham, the former Geelong Rover. To the half forward line, Knights waits underneath the pack. Punched away, Knights goes in again, lays a tackle on Hurd. And the umpire will come in and bounce. And whether, whether Essendon have moved Michael Long back to the forward line or whether Maxfield's now got the job on Long, because uh, Herneman had the job on that half back line or half forward line. Michael Long is a player ah. that's really set them on fire, isn't it, in this quarter? Well, it's James Hurd. Oh, Buick copped it round the shoulder against Tony Free. No doubt about that one. And a free kick to Darren Buick, who is very dangerous oh, around the goals. He's kicked one tonight. One, one. And he should probably have Chris. got a free kick earlier in the term. Now, can he make the distance from 52 metres? He's gone for the long bomb. Have a look at this. It's a great kick. Another goal. Darren Buick has kicked his second. And the Bombers playing well. 8-10. Lee Richmond, 6-3. Well, gee, Jeremy Healy said at the start of the match there was no wind advantage, but they were two tremendous kicks at goal, weren't they? Fantastic. If you're a bust, these goals really do break your heart when they're such a long way out of you. Play basketball, it's like them dobbing three-pointers. Oh, what terrific kicking. One by Kranzberg, the other by Buick. Maybe you'll change the scoring system, Don. You get nine points if you kick it from outside 50. Back to the centre. Under five minutes left in the half. Two great goals by Essendon. As the Bombers reassert their supremacy, 8-10 plays 6-3. Alessio again, down to Chris Danaher. Essendon winning it out of the centre. A vital stat. Todd Bremen, former West Coast Eagle. Kicks to the member stand flank. They've got to get something moving quickly. Kick up towards half Aye forward. On, from Campbell. Denham. It's just interesting, Peter, watching those Richmond guys when the ball's bounced down in the centre. Oh, he's hurt Square. Too. There he's hurt, Sean Denham is that they're not prepared to get between the man and the ball when the ball's bounced or when it leaves the hands of the ruckman. Consequently, they're not getting it out. It'll be a free kick. Taken by Dean Wallace against Turner. Well, that's uh, guess, again silly play by Turner. Herman just about to come back on, Peter. I think it's Herman. Dean Wallace kicking from left half back. No, it's men and goal. Yeah. The centre wing. Campbell again. Lees gives the hand pass to Lambert. Who's always busy. Well, that's a fair mark, isn't it? The umpire has blown the whistle. What did you think of that, Don? Was that good use of the body or was that an illegal bump? Well, I was watching actually Jackson. They made the move with Jackson coming off. Menengola on to the forward line. Now he's a class stack, uh, Menengola. Well, back with Francis, who's got the free kick anyway. 
good long kick. Rodriguez bring only one behind. And a couple of goals be handy before half time to the Tigers. Matthew Francis Mama. kicking his second behind of the Mama. night. And Sean Denham in the wars as well from uh, Jackson. Cameraman are doing a good job behind the play there, Pete. Spy cameras uh, <laughs> catching quite a lot, Pete, aren't they? As Wanganeen kicks in. Gee, he was brilliant in that first quarter. Danaher oh, and O'Donnell for Biting for Essendon. That's out of bounds right on 50. It'll be thrown in. And McCurry also doing his stretches on the boundary line for Essendon. Well, Stephen Jackson's on the bench too, Don, and he had a very ordinary night, Stephen Jackson. He's dropped marks, and they really were relying on him to have a big night. They need Lambert to do it just a little bit more at the moment too. There's Tony Free up in front of goal. Hogg was there. Now a chance. Metagola off the ground. Oh, hit the post. Bad luck. Isn't it critical? Mistakes on that full back line. Now Mark Thompson, an experienced player, got his hands to it, fumbled it, and they were ready to pounce. They are critical. And who wants to play at full back? Not too many players or in that on that full back line. Yeah. Denham coming off too for Essendon and uh, McCurry coming off. Oh, Wanganeen, a shocking kick straight to Nace. Now Nace can chip it over. Mark. Oh, well, gee, that was a delayed reaction by the up by Herneman. I didn't think he was going to pay it. And he didn't really hold it, did he? Not long enough. Well, uh, this is Herneman. He's a beautiful kick. He's a highly skilled player. He's a very acute angle. Drop part is a beautiful kick. That is a goal. Herneman gets his first, and the Tigers again come closer. Trailing by now just 11 points with three minutes to go to the ground. Well, the score's not a real true indication of the state of this game. Essendon really have controlled it. When you look at the marks, for example, the 16 to Richmond, 32 to Essendon, and kicks. Well, they're always in favour, or seem to be in favour of Essendon. They've controlled the game, but they haven't shown it on the scoreboard. Wayne Herdeman getting his first goal, Richmond seventh, their fourth this quarter, they trail by 11 points, under three minutes left in the half, Schaefer this time taps down, ball spills free out of the centre circle, Maxfield, Buick, a quick kick, touched off the boot, so a play on call, Bauer does just that, Hurd gets grabbed, ducked his head, is that holding the ball or too high? Yes, no, that was a good decision by the umpire. And sometimes they play those the other way, Bremen. Oh. Tried to bounce it and that comes unstuck. Oh gee. Buick. Quick hand pass and the Essendon forward line is open. Going to get his fourth herd. He's kicked four goal, uh, three goals, three already. Make that three goals four. Been very close to four goals three. Gee, John Northey won't like that. That bounce. Well, quite a few other Richmond players have made critical mistakes like that. They're elementary mistakes and they've got to get them out of their game if they're going to play finals type football. Howard to Campbell. Campbell marking only about 30 metres away from his own goal. Oh. The hand pass away, gives it back to Bremen. Had a knock on the nose early, which was bleeding profusely, seems to have stopped now. Maxfield snares it well, short of left centre wing. Francis in front. Hills is there. Metagola, who kicked the winning goal against Fitzroy with only seconds to play. Lambert gives the hand pass away, back to Maxfield. Onto that trusty left foot. Hogg will be unhappy with that. It's out of bounds. Hog wild, I think. A minute and a half to go. You know, Robbo in the first quarter wanted to back uh, Gavin Wanganeen for the Brownlow. I'm putting my money down tonight on Matthew Knight. I reckon that he will be right up in the top. And there's a free kick going the way of the Bombers. He's always in the play, Pete. He's very noticeable. Blonde hair. Yep. The best and fairest at punt road. Uh, good and bet. And most importantly, he can play. There is Mark Harvey. He can play Hi also. And Harvey. That's Manton. good play by Manton. Okay, let him up! Half back, Glenn Manton. He's got a good shape, and when he fills out, he'll be a strong player. Broad shoulders. Centre wing, Knight. Oh. Oh, and that was McCurry, oh, a good mark. He's a, got a lot of skill too. McCurry. Oh, mark McCurry, one of the young bombers. Seemed to have come out of nowhere. Oh, Ridley. Wanganeen. Danger here for the Tigers. The chip pass up in front of Kicker. Kicker punches it on. That was cleverly done to Spawn. Spawn lines up the goals. And he might have got this one. He has. Goal. So the Bombers hit back again. 9-11 to 7-5. They have the answers at the moment, don't they? Well, Wanganeen involved again. 
Where is that man playing? Everywhere. Well, he's up around midfield at the moment. Started in the back pocket. But he was responsible. Gave the option. Well spotted. Standing room only out there if you can see past the horses. So back to the centre, under a minute left in the half. 47 plays 65, Spawn's first goal. The Tigers out at the centre through Maxfield. Maxfield's kicked a half forward. He's playing the as a loose man in the back line, Wanganeen. The ubiquitous Gavin Wanganeen. Out to Michael Long, two of their best tonight. Hey, good point. Long's been very productive with his disposals. Kieran Spawn, who kicked the last goals. Can they get another one? Only seconds remaining before the siren for half time. Richmond certainly wouldn't want that. Kick it! The big fly, Chris Danaher. Dives on top of the ball, there's a bomber free kick to kick it. Six seconds to go, he'll get the kick. He might go, if the siren goes, he'll go the torpedo punt, Derek Kickett. Well, let's see what he does do. We've seen a couple of great long goals this quarter, kick from outside 50. I'll, I'll back the torpedo punt here. If he gets on a little, get the distance. Don't think he's got onto it long enough, has he? Off target, out of bounds on the floor, I fancy. And so no score, kicked by Derek Kickett after the siren to end the first half and Essendon will go in with a useful lead but uh, by no means a match winning one nine goals 11 in that quarter they kicked five goals seven so a good quarter by the Bombers but it certainly could have been a lot better for them so at half time in the Foster's Cup Grand Final the Bombers leading 9 of 11, 65 to the Tigers 7-5 47 about ready for the start of the second half it's a three-goal lead to the Bombers, even though they blazed away during that second quarter and should have been leading by more. Now they're off and running. Francis gets the hand pass out to centre wing. Long has been spectacular. Bauer with him. Bauer keeps it in. Does pretty well. Little left footer. Gains 15 or 20 metres. Knights put it down. Beats the tackler. Gets the hand pass over the top. To his tw twin in the skill department, Lambert. Not great hand pass this time. Bauer had kept going. Well done by Bauer. Now a long kick to full forward. Hogg from behind. Hard! Nash at the front. Herneman. Did he take it out? Yes, he did. We'll have a throw in about 40 metres around from the behind post. Tigers. Sorry, Drew. I just wouldn't mind having a look at that hand pass again from Nash. If that wasn't a throw, I'll go... Uh... I suppose, Robbo, would you say? Yes, my word. Very important that Richmond get their first score, I think, in this third quarter. Maybe his clavicle got in the way, but... <laughs> that is very important because Essendon doing all the attacking towards the end of that uh, second term. Yes, they really and, should have uh, put a nail in the coffin in the second quarter. The Bombers should Many they? opportunities. Yep. Here's a chance now for Thompson. Thompson's deep in the back pocket. He kicks it back near the wing. Nearly the mark to Bauer, but Long will make him pay for that mistake. Michael Long runs away. Lovely little hand pass for Mercury. Short kick, all right. Buick. Darren Buick looks as though he's permanent half forward, permanent forward pocket and gives it to kick it. Handball away. Kransberg on the favoured left foot. Shot for goal by Kransberg. He's let himself down there. Hook the kick. And through four. One behind. So Richmond breathe a sigh of relief. Turner back there to kick it back into play. It's Buick with his pace on that forward line. has been a constant thorn in the side of the Tiger defence. He's had eight kicks and five hand passes. Lambert going up for the mark and he'll finish up with the crumbs just about. Look at the little Tiger in the Tiger colours. Number four for Richmond. One of best and fairest a couple of years ago. Just lives for the game of Australian football. 66 plays 47. Richmond not out of it yet. Essendon's inaccuracy perhaps kept the Tigers in this a bit. Trouble for Young. Elwin not in possession. He'll take a free kick. Well, yeah, not really expecting the free there. I... He lost the ball in the tackle, and uh, in that, those circumstances, it's play on, but he was held on to for a long time. Well, he's in two minds. Now does the right thing, in my opinion. Kicks it long down towards the wing to get the Tigers a little bit out of trouble. There's a chance for Herneman. Grabbed by the leg. Maybe the advantage. Is it with the tight? Oh, brilliant football, O'Donnell. Knights nearly collects it. Essendon through Harvey. Bullis for Richmond. Ball fed out the back rugby style. Now Lambert. Forced to kick with his right foot. Up towards centre half forward. Harvey. Bounce was good for him, but he's buried by Bauer. 
Good decision. And the other tackler there for Richmond could have been Menegola. Away goes Bauer. Bauer's long kick to the goal front. Hogg, kick it off the ground, Jeffrey. Oh, he just couldn't quite get his foot to it. Nash, no, it's forced over for a rush behind to Richmond. When Essendon looked as though they were in lots of trouble. He probably did have time there, Jeff Hogg, to take it in possession instead of trying to kick it off the ground. Manton in a little bit of trouble, might have hurt his finger. Well, I think the ball went for a behind and Manton's fingers went for a goal. Oh, here's a chance. Francis takes the mark. Too far out to score. He pops it up short. Hogg with a charge at it. Gets underneath the ball. Chance for Nash. Missed it. Behind. That would have been a bit heavy. That was a rather lackadaisical shot, wasn't it, by Nash, do you think? Let's have a look at what happened to Glenn Manton here. Have been the incident where he may have came down, uh, come down Nash, with his hand there. I did think he? Nash might have stood on his fingers yes, accidentally. Heard marks the kicking. Very promising young footballer, James Heard. High kick in near the centre. Harvey marks. Certainly had an influence on this game, Mark Harvey. Nice long kick to right half forward. Spawn tap over the top. Not quite to the advantage of his teammate. Trying to run onto it there was Buick. And the ball forced over for a boundary throw in. The Essendon doctor, Bruce Reed, on the boundary line. Ready to examine Manton if he can get him close enough to the boundary line. Masiti going nowhere. Oh, desperate stuff by Denham. Picked up by Buick. Buick's kick into the pocket. No mark taken. Punched away from Kranzberg by Bullis. Picked up by Howard. Howard's kick. Back near the wing. Knights. Oh! He's got three to beat. Very, very difficult. Mercedes' little left foot kick into the path of Long, who took the half volley as though it was a soda. Here goes Denham. Tries to crash through. Three players tackle him. In goes Howard. Ball rebounds for free. Buick does some good work and keeps the ball in the half forward region for the Bombers boundary throw in. Michael Long's pick up on the half volley. Absolutely superb. He has ter terrific skills, hasn't he, Michael Long? Somerville tries to work it to the back, does to Danaher, he can't break the tackle, the tackling is red hot. That was Howard, here's Lambert. Kicked by Lambert off the left, up towards Knights, almost a one-hander. Comes to O'Donnell, look at these tackles sticking. Harvey gets him, has a good look at Maxfield as he tried to get him high. Tapped down by Campbell, Denham flicks the ball up, it's a throw. They're away too, Essendon. Danaher running into an open goal there. Lambert comes out towards the wing where Bremen flies and takes the mark. Takes some risks, Richmond, the two pedestrian. Holding onto the ball for a long time there, Bremen. Great penetration with the kick. Short of the 50. Knights. Great tackle, O'Donnell. It spills to Bauer. He's on the 50, but Long corners him. Bauer centres. It brought Danaher into the play. He's got it. Masiti. And his kick to set a half forward. Kick it. Punched away from him by Lees. Ball all over the park. Not much scoring in this third quarter, but great stuff to watch. Masiti out to Denham. Kicked by Denham off the left. As it cleared the defence, it has onto the chest of Mercury. Within scoring distance, not quite. He goes for the pass to Hurd. Well, some ordinary manning up there by the Tiger defence. A good play by the young fella for us there, Mark McCurry, spotting Hurd. He just snuck in there behind the Richmond defenders, got away from his opponent, and took that very safe chest mark. Excellent kick by McCurry. He's had a great night. He's had eight shots at goal, and he's now kicked four for. Four in the team tally of 10 goals, 12. It's just sneaking away a little bit at the moment, is not it? Richmond really need a couple of quick goals to get back into this match. Got some very classy players, Essendon, all over the ground. Very impressed in a couple of these young Essendon. Well, the baby bombers, I suppose, as they've been called. And uh, James Hurd, one of those. Well, at half time, the statistics showed that Essendon 104 kicks to 81. 48 handballs to 31, 39 marks to 17. 
really is a true reflection of the way that game went in the first half and they've carried on in the third quarter. Young is pushed in the back there by Hills. And pretty strong looking Paul Hills now. So he's done a fair amount of weight work. Richmond need to lift around the middle of the ground. Young goes straight towards goal, in towards centre half forward. No mark taken, taken off the pack by Knights. Always looks as though he's got plenty of time. Up towards Holt, Nash is there, can't get the hand pass away. Still on the bottom there, Wanganoon caught by Menegola. In goes Nash, Thompson, a real struggle for possession. Terrific stuff there by five or six players from both sides. And eventually Mark Thompson. Kevin Sheedy looking on, very, very serious. There with Sheets. Chance for O'Donnell. Kicks it clear. Out to a vacant wing area where Francis leads in the race for the ball. Onto him is Hills. And all Francis can do is just kick it in front of himself and it goes over for a boundary throw in. Richmond with some uh, pretty ordinary individual statistics. They've had a couple of very high possession gatherers, but they've got a lot around about six and seven possessions. Wanganine, now Masidi, back to Hills. The youth of Essendon, they're really doing quite well. Here's a chance now for Schaefer. He was a little slow. Swooping on it long. Look at that pace. Poor kick. Falls short. Lees will clear. Lees clear. Ride out to left half back flank. Mercury and Maxfield. Ball goes over boundary throwing. There'll be a big cheer in a minute, uh, Robbo, when Dale Waitman comes on. Matthew Francis coming off for the Tigers. And there it is, the Richmond veteran on for his first taste of uh, football in the 1993 season. And Philandia about to come on for Essendon. Nash goes off the ground. Centre of the ground. Wanganeen, a couple of touches in the last minute. He'd been quiet for the first six or so minutes of this term. After a brilliant first half. Mercury, terrific pickup. Back to Long. Pops it up pretty high. Ooh, down goes free. Buick grabs it off to Kranzberg and he bounces it through. Goal to Kranzberg. Two goals to Peter Kranzberg and it looks a bit of a break now for the Bombers. There's yes, quite a gap opening up now. Yes, and really doing most of the attacking in this third term. Two very constructive players on the forward line. Buick competing for that mark and then doing the roving as well. Feeding off that hand, burst, hand pass to Cranberg, who kicks his second goal after starting off from the interchange bench. Well, I don't like to say it, but the floodgates, gee, they're uh, just opening up ever so slightly. Essendon, 29 points in front. Some of them. Good bounce. Back the centre, Somerville Go gets his left hand to it Menegola goes back and gathers quite nicely for the Tigers his kick high to no one in particular but Wanganeen, look at that it's judgment through the air superb. quite superb difficult task for Waitman to come onto the ground and play in the forward pocket, a man who's handling the ball so beautifully is Wanganeen Chris Danaher, away for Denham Denham's kick up to a vacant right half forward area where Howitt marks, takes the ball rather, hand pass away for Campbell. Campbell now, his kick back near the centre. Harvey, again pretty Ooh. strong. No. Could be against Harvey. Oh, no. He threw the arm back, Robbo. Oh, burn. Hey, well, are you allowed to do that, are you? I think that's a sympathetic free kick. Really. Oh, okay. We might have the umpire was bit. right on the we spot. Here he is, takes the mark, Waitman right behind him. Severe pressure, he just threw that arm back. Well, you might be right, Rob. Well, I think. The, the, the Richmond guy holding him up, that's all. And he's entitled to probably shrug the guy off. Actually, Man. it looked worse in that first instance, I thought. Manton looks as though he's recovered from that uh, finger injury. Up at half forward now for the Tigers. O'Donnell wins the punch away. Nash going all right this third quarter. High ball short of the 50. Harvey charges at it and takes it on the chest. Across the half-back line he goes. Out in front of Michael Long. This is a sprint and guess who will win it? Michael Long, great shepherd by Kickett. Really got rid of his opponent. 
and the kick by Long is superb and Somerville on all fours takes the mark. Kicker was heading for the interchange when he affected that uh, Shepherd there. Somerville, two possessions for the night. On the bounce to Buick. On the 50. Kick one from here earlier. He goes again. And can't repeat the dose. Now yeah, Derek Kickett going off the ground. Philandia coming on for the Bombers. Five goals straight the margin. Enormous depth at Essendon, haven't they? You know, when you can take players like Kickett off the ground, Alessio sitting on the bench. Bremen kicks it to himself and then kicks it really long out towards the wing. Taken by Denham, playing a disciplined game. Wanganoon caught, must be penalised. Price followed his whistle. Maxfield taps it out of bounds for a throw in. That was a terrific tackle by Lambert. Wanganoon was slippery too. as an eel, but he yep. stopped him dead. Lambert uh, let the umpire know about that. Boundary throw in. Ah! Turner beaten for it by O'Donnell. Mesita. fans they haven't had much to shout about in this third quarter they win in at half time with a score line of 7-5 they've progressed to 7-7 on the other hand Essendon have gone from 9-11 oh, that's kicking in danger 30. against Johnny Howard there the little bloke Peter Philandia I think you mentioned last week Robbo very much like uh, Tony Liberatore is, in stature yep Philandia's kick 25 meters short of goal Free kick right in front. Round the neck of Somerville. Well, this will make the margin six goals. And you can't see the Tigers getting back from here. Well, just have a look at some replay. A big pack of players flying for that ball. Somerville down low. And there's the tackle there. Definitely around the shoulders by uh, Robert Schaefer. Kick by Somerville. Is another one. So the margin six goals and Richmond have only kicked seven so far. Yes, and Richmond only kicking two behinds in this third quarter. The lead up to this goal and the free kick to Somerville. A big pack of players flying there. And no doubt about that. A bit of a crude tackle there from uh, Robert Schaefer, the young Richmond Ruckman. And some of you are making no mistake. 12-13 to 7-7. So, sizeable margin in favour of the Bombers. Eight and a half minutes left. Denham gets them away from the centre. Vital centre breaks. Howard, good bump by Hills. Oh, Robbo. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, I thought it was a fair bump, but umpire saw it as a free kick. Howard, Schaefer, back to Howard. Up to the half forward region. Have a guess who's got it. Gavin a champion. Wanganoon. It's uh, I suppose it's thrown around pretty loosely. The, the terms used pretty loosely champion, but this bloke at 19 years of age has to be one already. Very, very well balanced. Bremen. Short kick. Waitman. Good gather. Off to Turner. Turner's kick. Marked by Herneman. Now the Tigers, if they're to have any chance in this game, Herneman must kick this goal. Seven and three quarter minutes left in the third quarter as Jackson prepares to come back onto the playing arena. Arena. Wayne Herneman. He's kicked one. Beautiful kick in the second quarter. That's not bad either. He's kicked two. So Richmond get their eighth goal. 8-7. They trail Essendon. 12-13. Stephen Jackson comes back on, he's replaced Scott Turner. It's been very slow coming, that goal for the Tigers in this third quarter. Wayne Herneman, he kicked a goal from a similar position in the second term. Same side of the ground. He uh, looks to be a pretty good prospect for the Tigers. Well, Jackson is a goal scorer. He's got to start getting a kick on the forward line. The Tigers need some scoring. That was their first goal for the quarter. And here's a free kick. Coming to Essendon, to Somerville. Jackson at centre-half forward, playing on Harvey. He's playing at centre-half back. Kick out wide. Third. Ground for Landia. 
concedes more ground. That's for him. The kick by Denham straight up the centre corridor. Uh, he's given it away. 5th in the league in average possessions last year, Campbell. 26 possessions a game. Hills goes back. Wallace, a bit of a fumble. Might be out of touch. Hasn't played too much. And a goaler off the left hand to Lambert. Can set something up now. Maxfield's got pace and can kick long. He goes long. Didn't quite make it. Thompson gets back there. And Thompson, experienced campaigner, takes his time and kicks it wide to right half back where it's gathered nicely by Long. Long's kick, nearly marked by Spawn. Beautifully roved there by Philandia. Philandia's kick to the 50 metre line, no mark taken. Kranzberg, beaten for it by Schaefer, dispossessed by Moon. Oh, Barry Young. You're only centimetres away, son. The kick in towards half forward for Essendon. Back goes Chris Danaher. Campbell, who's got it? Danaher, Buick. Can't get clear, that's a little high. Barry Young, a little fortunate. It was one low and one high. He did yeah. duck down when he saw the tackle coming, I think, Buick. The umpire may have taken that into account. But the lucky man out of that incident, just slightly before that, was Mercury, when Young just missed him. I would. Richmond get out of trouble. Oh, oh Lees has fumbled. Took his eyes off the football just for a second or three. Now Bremen. Long kick to centre half forward. Oh, they've gone well done. Alessio back on, Kranzberg off for the Bombers. Essendon have won three night flags, night cups under Kevin Sheedy. It looked like making it four tonight. Philandia's hand passes astray, taken by Bauer into Lambert. Always where the action is, Craig Lambert. Back he goes to Howard. Long kick out wide to centre wing. Knights with a bit of space. Hasn't got too many players free up the ground. So he kicks long to the 50. Jackson in the chop there. Cannot get a touch. Wallace goes back. Hills. Masiti. And they're running free in the middle of the ground. One-handed gather by Wanganin was perfect. And look at the kick. Hurd is superb overhead. Yes, great mark Hurd. Strong mark out in front of Barry Young. He's got a bit of a chance of kicking this too. He goes long. Offline. Got the distance, no worries. He has had nine shots at goal tonight for four goals, five, James Hurd. They just seem to have so many uh, reserves and emergencies to come on. They're not uh, short of talent at all, Essendon. They've got so much backup. Wanganin, 16 kicks, one hand pass, and seven marks. Bullis takes the kick in. Back to Bremen. Bremen's kick out near the wing. Nearly marked by O'Donnell. Tap on was by Petura, now Knights. Kick beautifully smothered. O'Donnell, Bernie must get so many stats that don't really register on the stat sheet. Exactly, exactly, and they're the very important ones, aren't they? That one especially, saved probably 20, 30 metres. It wasn't a, a full-blooded kick. Just absolute lousiness, wasn't it, yes, by O'Donnell? Yes, it was. Bauer. Not a bad kick by Bauer, and it's marked by Maxfield. Just three and a half minutes to go to three-quarter time. I'd like to finish with a couple of goals, the Tigers. Hills, caught in Menegola's tackle. Comes to Wallace, who kicks out of bounds on the full. Out yeah, before he kicked it, I think. Yes, he Wallace appealing for that, but uh, gee, it looked uh, a line ball decision there, wasn't it, Robber? Could have went either way. Well, you've got to give the boundary umpire the chance. He was right on the scene. 31 points the margin. Jackson in ruck to Waitman. He balks, finds Naish. 55 metres out, Chris Naish. Nobody back there. It bounces. Oh, just touched on the line. Manton, you did well there, son. I reckon when the kick left the boot, there was nobody within 20 metres of the goal line, so he's done well. Amazing how he got back there. Well, only registers as a behind for the Richmond. Unfortunately for them, and Essendon, through O'Donnell, get the ball back near centre wing. Well, Gary O'Donnell, he covers a lot of territory in a game of football. He's had 13 kicks and four hand passes. It's just part of the ground that's been resurfaced there. The ball going out of bounds just near the, uh, the batting uh, mound 
when they play baseball here. They resurfaced actually uh, the pitcher's man and the batter's man. Here's Nash for Richmond. Lovely little kick, finds Knights. And Must get something out of this, the Tigers. Knights go straight towards goal. And Thompson attacked it. Jackson gathered it nicely. Herneman, back to Jackson. Got to kick a goal, Jacko. And he hits the post. Well, no luck for Richmond. Jackson only 30 metres out directly in front. Kevin Sheedy running a message down to Brian Wood on the boundary line. Well, now the margin is under five goals. And with still two and a half minutes to go to three-quarter time, Richmond could get a couple, might be very handy. Managola did well to stretch the hamstrings and get to that one. Kicked a very important goal uh, in the semi-final match, Todd Managola. Won the game with yep. 20 seconds to go. Yep. Well, if he can kick this and bounce it back in the centre with two minutes left, who knows? Todd Menegola, ex-West Australian. They kicked pretty well. He has kicked well. Well, who knows? 12-14 to 9-9. There's a margin now, 23 points. They're close enough if they're good enough, the Tigers. It's really been one-way traffic in this third term. Great kick from Menegola from about 55 metres out. So he's covered 60 metres with that drop punt. And as we just said, he kicked that winning goal in the semi-final against Fitzroy. Well, Johnny Northey, I'm sure he'd uh, be wishing that they could get maybe another goal before three-quarter time. They trail by 23 points. Just under two minutes left. Schaefer beaten for it by Somerville. Down to Denham, marked by Greenham. Move it on quickly, Todd. And he does. This time, the kick has been marked by Young. We've just had a figure on the crowd, Robbo. 75,500. Fabulous. That is unbelievable. And kick goes in to centre-half forward. And that could be paid, is it, to Bauer? Yes. Handball away. Lakeman. Go, Dale. Cover yourself in glory. Goes to the goal front, but he hooks the kick. And it's through for a behind. He didn't look confident, did he? And a couple of minutes ago, he gave a hand pass away to Nash when he might have otherwise gone for a goal. Well, probably lack of football. He missed a lot of football last year, uh, Dale Whiteman, with Achilles problems. Minute 10 left to three-quarter time. Big pack here. Comes to Wallace. Nearly dispossessed. Gets rid of it. Long didn't take possession. Isn't that beautiful to watch? Masiti to Mercury. All the M's with the big numbers. O'Donnell. The O with the small number. And run over the boundary line by Hurd and we'll have a throw in. Well, they didn't have it down their end. But there's time enough for Richmond to whip it up for another goal. First time these two teams have played in a final, day or night, for 50 years. And it hasn't disappointed. Philandia was out, the ball was in. Oh, terrific stuff. What a mark by Bullis. They've got to go down that far side of the ground. If they can get a player in the open, free. Ball bounces awkwardly. Well done, Tony Free. Chased by Spawn, but took the ball away. Pass, Waitman marks. Plays on into the centre, Bauer. Bowers kick up to half forward. Just 13 seconds left. Denham's going to get back. Maybe this will tidy up for Essendon as Chris Danaher goes to the boundary line. And that surely will be the last passage of play apart from this ruck contest before three-quarter time. Jackson in position to do the ruck work against Harvey. Harvey from the back, gets the tap out. Knights! Siren sounds, this kick will not register. Jeff Hogg, and at three-quarter time, Essendon lead by 22 points, 12-14 to 9-10. In one of the biggest turnabouts in football history, 
Richmond defeated Swan Districts by 186 points in the quarter-final of the 1982 night series and promptly lost to the Sydney Swans in their next match by 53 points. A 239-point swing. And they come back. Here's Peter McKenna, Don Scott and Peter Landy. 75,553. That way for the, for the Foster's Cup Grand Final. The final quarter. And the Tigers need that spark to ignite them pretty quickly. Maxfield up towards Knights and Buick. Two players who really start for their respective sides tonight. And both in line, therefore, for the Michael Tuck middle. He's like tunnel ball out there. Nobody can pick it up. Wanganeen, he's been a star too. Gets a push in the back. At least we thought so. The umpire didn't. Chris Danaher. Wallace. Philandia. Tackle. Did he have it? Whistle goes. Peter Philandia will take the free kick. Philandia from left half forward. Decides to centre it. Some tall timber needed down there. Play on call from the umpire. Long, magnificent skills. To Hurd. Tackle. Drops the ball. Long off the ground. And rushed through by Bullis for one behind. The umpire says all clear. First score of the final quarter. Well, you've got to be adaptable in this lesson inside. And Darren Buick playing on the half-back line. Knights is on the half-forward line for Richmond. Those two are immediate opponents. Well, Mark Matura back on the ground. A shocking kick straight to Spawn. Spawn straightens up, but he's missed. And they, let, well, Essendon have let Richmond off the hook with some, some of their kicking tonight. That was a bad kick by young Mark Matura. But only four goals a margin. They're not out of it, Richmond. Essendon have certainly been the better side. As Jared Healy said at three-quarter time, that gang tackling has been missing from Richmond. They just don't seem to have had that same enthusiasm. Here's a good mark to Schaefer at half-back. Gives it on to Maxfield. They need a couple of quick goals to really spark them. Half-forward, Buick races back. Onto the left foot, Darren Buick. He's been a dangerous player to set a wing. Chris Danaher. And pass to David Grinvold to the half forward line. The race is on. James Hurd versus Paul Bullis. Hurd a little bit more pace. Bullis is that in the back? No, it's not. A bit of throw in. About 30 metres around from the bomber goal. James Hurd. It's been brilliant tonight. Four goals, oh, five, Pete. Yep, been an excellent player and uh, very strong overhead. Got some promising young players, the bombers. As I said earlier, they seem to have come out of nowhere. These players. Now there's a kick around the boundary line by Chris Nash and over the line. There's Kevin Sheedy, while well, he's been through this many, many times, both as a player. 251 games for the Tigers. Yeah, great player too. And as a coach, of course, he's led the Bombers to a couple of premierships. Now Alessio versus Schaefer. The ball hits the deck. Peter Philandia. Now it's Grinvold, former South Australian, to half forward. The dangerous Michael Long, clever hands. As he gets it to Gary O'Donnell, the long bomb, and he has just missed. Certainly in good form, isn't it? Amazing thing about tonight's game, Peter, is a number of long scoring shots that have actually made the tag, whether it be point or goal. They're letting them go from 50 metres, and they're making the distance quite easily. Especially Players at that end side. Side. Well, on both sides are doing it. Schaefer makes a lead for Petura's kick. Danaher underneath it. Alessio punches on. Spawn pounces on it. Kicks it back across his body. Wallace, good attempt to mark. Petura. Safe in defence, kicks to centre wing, marking contest out there. Nothing for it, yes, there is something for it. Be a free kick going Richmond's way. Or uh, in the back, I guess, and Bauer will take it. He started on the bench for the Tigers. Boy, they need something to happen quickly. Young kicks up to the edge of the square. Big pack of players, and they all misjudge that. I don't yeah, think it's being it held. Fast. Advantage Richmond's way. Yes, going Knights. And Knights could kick this one. Going pretty close, I think he's put it through. He has. That's what they wanted. The Tigers roar again. So Knights kicks his first goal, his first score for the night. 10-10, and the difference got only 19 points. Well, it all came through a free kick. I'll show you the free kick. It's to men in goal. I see Grenville holding on left the screen. Advantage played. 
Knights. Really no pressure at all. Well, that was just what the doctor ordered a goal to Matthew Knights. Dean Wallace has gone off too, Peter, in that break, and uh, uh, Kranzberg's come on. Wallace is playing on the forward line. Well, can they get the next one? Good tackle by Lambert. He's off and running, but in the meantime, the umpire had called for a bounce. Got a little bit more urgency. There's an excited young lady. But uh, a lot more urgency about Richmond now. They realise they've got to give it absolutely everything in this final term. It is a grand final. It's a tunnel ball drop. Off the ground by Maxfield. And Knights has marked the half forward. Handball wide. Nash picks it up. He's trying to get onto the right foot. 50 metres out. Chris Nash goes for home. And it is forced through for a behind. Matthew Knights might have been better off uh, getting onto his own left foot there and having a long ball. Nations kick one four and three of those behinds coming in the second half. Thompson to kick in. A severe knee injury a few years back now. Sidelined him for about a season. Crowd certainly giving him the hurry on. It's not worrying him. But starts again now. Thompson kicks in. Grenville underneath it. Two Essendon players are there. Good mark. Taken by Manton ultimately. Oh, Buick. Gee, he's been good tonight. His own defensive 50 metre line. Kicks to the circle. None can take it. Spawn is there. Young. Well gets done. there first. Onto Bauer. Fear of Mercury. Out the half. Oh, oh, magnificent mark. Has he played a great game? Started off well and has got better. Wangani to Buick. Kicks to centre wing. Mercury. Masiti. The big M's. And here's another one, Heard underneath it, but Kranzberg's there, kick away for Richmond, came from Petura, back it comes, Mercury, the Bombers answering the Tiger challenge, he kicks long, into the forward pocket, off the hands of Young, they wouldn't want to make uh, a meal of this, and Young clearing dash gets Richmond out of danger. Oh, great play Barry Young, he backed himself in, he's found Campbell, boy have they lifted their tempo, Richmond as they go forward again, Wenganeen, oh, have a look at that! That was great play, great play. Championship skill that. Fantastic Wenganeen. And he's found Harvey. She reads the play well. Wenganeen, that's the kick from Harvey. Finds Glenn Manton. Manton on centre wing, brings it in towards half forward. And McCurry marks. And he's a good young talented player also. He's way out, halfway between centre wing and half forward. McCurry to the half forward line. Some pushing and shoving going up at a mark. Paid the mark to Tura. Well, free kick, I'm not quite sure I agree with the pushing and shoving you mentioned, Pete. There was plenty there. 14 and three-quarter minutes left in this match. Big punch away from Harvey. Back up towards the edge of the square. O'Donnell over runs it. Denham's tackle and Lambert ineffective. The Richmond star gets the hand pass out to Nash. Too far out to score. Runs through centre wing. Nash long raking kick up inside 50. Herneman, mark, no. No mark and no free kick. Wakeman, was he leg? He started on the bench, farms out a hand pass, two of them could take it. Campbell kicks it, goal, and gets it! Uh, 11 11 to 12 17. That's his third goal, Hanneman. Hanneman. That was a good hand pass by Waitman, but it was a good kick and good lead. Number one, it was Herneman who took off the ball were about centre wing. And there he is, following up. Richmond back in at only two goals a difference. It was well, Herneman, the goal kicker. He's kicked two in this half. He's kicked three, and Richmond are back in it. 12 points the difference, Pete. 14 minutes to go. Wayne Herneman oh. has kicked three, and the Tigers are lifting. And centre of the ground, Grenvold, a quick kick. Tony Free and Michael Long, Free used his body, goes to ground, kicks it quickly, they're desperate. Look at the tackling of Richmond, Barry Young on the left foot to the half forward line. Let's see what can happen, Hogg and uh, Knights at the back. Here's Buick, a quick kick. Mm, yeah, Look the at the pressure on, now. The pressure's yes, on. You've hit it, hit the nail on the head there, the pressure right on the hurry kick has gone straight to Nathan Bauer. Bauer to the half forward line, Jeff Hogg at the back, Matthew Knights also. Should have gone for the ball, Hogg. Players go to ground, and look at that smother by Menegola. I don't care what or who you are, Peter, when the pressure's on, Darren Buick's got a lot of composure and all that, but we saw him, the quick kick, 
I don't care who it is. If you can maintain pressure, anybody can maintain pressure. You really do, do bring good players down a level. 13 and a half minutes left in the match now. O'Donnell used to the pressure of grand finals. And you can see by that he's going to kick straight back over the boundary line from Gary O'Donnell. Pete, there's still just over 13 minutes to play left, so Tons plenty of time. of time. What a great finish as it was when the Tigers tackled for Troy and went down to the last kick of the night before Menegola we finally put one through. We were looking at extra time then. Didn't eventuate. There were, uh, won't be extra time tonight perhaps, but O'Donnell, gee, that wasn't a oh, free kick. Oh, he, dropped, he dropped the mark. Could have been a bit high by Nash. All he had to do was drag his jumper. If it wasn't a mark, could have been holding the ball. Well, I think uh, he was appealing for holding the ball, actually, the Richmond player. So a bounce inside 50, right half forward. Manton Jossens wins the tap down. Campbell, high kick, barely travels the required distance. Player dragged down there at Ranganine, no free kick for it. Knights and Buick, the two stars, Jim Buick looking for a free kick. The interesting thing, it was Mark Thompson that cleared from the goal square. He put his body between Herman and the ball and got it away. That's experience and that's strength. Boundary throw in, close to centre wing, just on Richmond's attacking side of centre. Jackson does battle with Manton. Jackson wins it with the hand pass, not a good one. Might be a turnover here, Northey wouldn't be happy with that. Lambert racing for it. The boundary line will suit Richmond, I think, before Young can get there. And Essendon, though, making about 30 metres this time to throw in right in the middle of the interchange area on centre wing. Well, full marks to Richmond because really for three quarters they have not played well. They've lifted a real a cog here. Socket off the ground by Campbell. Grenville caught with it. Loses the ball in the tackle. Strong tackling by Lambert. In goes Chris Danaher. A quick hand pass in close. Here's Mercury. He goes to ground. Gets in a hand pass. Mercedes. Mercedes in towards half forward. A one on one contest. The ball hits the deck. Perdura backing himself and he's got to soccer it off the ground. Here's Tony Free. He tries to boot it. Free kick. Holding the man. Will go to Tony Free at half back. Free. A tough. Hard, rugged player. Red runners, a long kick. He's got to oh. kick it off. Oh.